O oh God, the protector of all who trust you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not things eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it, grow, when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. Therefore, every student, every disciple, every person who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. A few years ago, I visited Northern California with my best friend, Angie. She had grown up there and wanted to share her favorite places with me. One morning, we took the long and windy road to San Mateo County Memorial Park, where I experienced the grandeur of the redwoods for the first time. There were no other people there, just me, my friend, and this magnificent cathedral of trees. It took my breath away. All I could do was breathe and smile and try to just take it all in. The smell of the wood and earth, the sound of the birds and insects singing and chir chirping and an occasional squirrel scampering by. I kept looking and exploring, taking in the colors, the green and the red of the forest as the pure white beams of light streamed down from the heavens, shining down through the trees. Oh, and the trees, their branches stretched to the sky. Their trunks were so, so wide that I could easily stand inside the hollow. Words really can't describe this place, these trees, or the majesty, beauty, holiness, and joy I found in this forest, in the presence of these gentle, giant, and mighty trees. And then it hit me. I realized as I gazed upon them, some of these grand and mighty trees had breathed the same air as Jesus, as the disciples, as Mary and Martha. They had been around since the time of Christ, and they were still growing, reaching toward heaven providing shelter for birds, resisting the power of winds and storms. They each had started as a small seed about the size of a tomato seed. And through hundreds, sometimes thousands of years, they had grown into these magnificent living reminders of the presence of God, the enduring power of the gospel, the roots of our traditions, and the hope and the knowledge that they are still here still growing, still standing, and so are we. Like the Jesus movement, Christianity started with a seed, with one person, Jesus, and his small group of followers. Jesus sent his disciples to spread the good news to the whole world. These seeds of love were scattered around the globe, and over 2,000 years later, we are still learning about the teachings and love of Jesus. We are still trying to imagine and live into the kingdom of heaven. Trying to describe God's love or the kingdom of heaven is like trying to describe love, the ocean, or a sunset. Words cannot capture it. It's just too beautiful, too precious, too amazing. What I love about the image of a seed, especially the mustard seed, is that Although it starts off so small, so small that it could easily be overlooked, so small that it may seem insignificant, 
but over time its roots grow deeper into the earth and it grows and it grows into a large tree as much as 20 or 30 feet high and 20 feet wide that, with, that can withstand wind and rain, heat and drought. It grows in harsh and difficult conditions. Over time, the seed becomes a tree, a place where all different kinds of birds are welcomed as well as other creatures. It becomes a home that shelters, a living creation that bears different kinds of fruits and seeds and has many uses, including medicinal properties. So how are the seeds of the mustard seed, mustard tree sown? They are spread when birds fly away to other places. The same birds that found shelter in its branches or trunks, the same birds that were nourished by its seed, scatter them wherever they go. No act of kindness, no matter how small, is ever wasted. The tree does not discriminate against the birds saying, you can't rest here, or you can't find shade and rest under my branches. Just like the kingdom of heaven, the tree and the church continue to grow up toward the sun with branches reaching out in all directions. In ancient times, birds sometimes represented non-believers. So this tree was a home, a shelter for all. Gentiles and Jews, believers and non-believers, servants and free, Republicans and Democrats, everyone. The tree did not discriminate or judge. It just offered its very life, its fruit, its seeds, its shade to the world. Each one of us started as a seed, as something so small that the human eye could not perceive us. But the potential, oh, the potential was there from the very beginning. We grew inside our mothers and we were brought forth into this world as helpless infants, where we continued to learn and grow. Sometimes our conditions for growth were optimal. At other times, we experienced winds of change, intense heat, violent storms, and droughts. But we are still here, still growing, still rooted in our past, and still able to serve. We are the church, each of us, and each of us is called to grow where we are planted to allow others into our loving arms just as Christ did for us, to provide shelter for those in need and to bear fruit that nourishes others, to take what we have learned about our traditions, our prayers, holy scriptures, and our experiences with God and share this good news and share our loving community with every kind of curious bird that we encounter. We are out in the world and with God's help, we can continue to spread the seeds of love, joy, and hope far and wide. Amen. May God give you the grace not to sell yourself short, grace to risk something big for something good, grace to remember that the world is now too dangerous for anything but truth and too small for anything but love. So may God take your minds and think through them. May God take your lips and speak through them. May God take your hearts and set them on fire. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.